I'm not that young, like, I'm not a spring chicken. <laughs> I've been waiting for my taxi. Everyone's gone now. I'm the only one left. G'day everyone and thanks for tuning in. You're joining me today in Perth Airport Terminal 3, the home base of Qantas and their affiliated airlines. I'm about to embark on what can be best described as an F Geek's wet dream. Let's go to Live Ryan right here, right now. And g'day everyone, that's right, I'm coming to you from Perth Airport and I am in the Qantas Domestic Terminal heading towards uh, Kalgoorlie. So I am getting on the Fokker 100, which is really the highlight of this entire trip. So I've just got off a flight from uh, Melbourne earlier on, on the A330. So if you haven't seen that trip report, um, I suggest you quickly watch it right now. I'll link it in the video description below. So I'm gonna quickly um, head up to Qantas Club to um, chill for about 30 minutes before I run to the Kalgoorlie flight, okay? So uh, yeah, stay tuned and see what the Fokker 100 is all about. Let's do this. If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan and I create heaps of travel and food related content. This trip started in Adelaide yesterday where I flew to Melbourne and joined my friends for an epic foodie adventure. I flew in earlier on the Airbus A330 and tomorrow I get on the Prospector train from Kalgoorlie back to Perth where I'll fly home to Adelaide. Links to these videos are in the description below. Better yet, hit the subscribe and bell icon so you don't miss out on what's coming up next. Giving me a like will surely encourage me to keep prodding along to produce these videos. Here's the thanks and your support is very much appreciated. On this day of travel, the Qantas Club was shut so we were all invited to use the business lounge, which was a nice change. A warm and friendly welcome awaited and I was soon walking down the tranquil lounge. In 2015, this was the first domestic lounge to be brought up to standard similar to the airline's international lounges. Before that, this place really had the charm of a basic office pantry. These days, it looks a lot more chic and the earthy tones are supposed to represent the outback. I am liking the vibes here. I was scheduled to arrive in Kalgoorlie this evening. So not having been there before, I'm unsure of what the dining situation is going to be. So I'd better fill my tummy up now just in case. The fresh pizzas are definitely the go-to. And I had a smattering of other savoury items as well. Qantas Lounge Catering is excellent when they don't try and fusion their Asian attempts. Just stick to the classics and you'll be fine. The origins of Perth Airport really began here in Terminals 3 and 4. The master plan has called for the entire airport operations to be moved towards the opposite end of the airfield together with Terminals 1 and 2. As a result, very little has been done here beyond cosmetic refurbishments since demolition is the eventual outcome. When will that happen is anyone's guess. Terminals 3 and 4 place host to Qantas, Qantas Link and Jetstar. Qantas International flies out from here to Singapore, London, Johannesburg and Rome. Because this infrastructure isn't made for processing international movements, let's just say, the experience leaves a lot to be desired when you're arriving from one of those destinations into this terminal. 
The giddy, exciting quiver in my groin heading towards the Fokker 100 was undeniable. Fokker was a Dutch aircraft manufacturer which was founded in 1912. It was most successful in the 1930s when they dominated the civil aviation market. Imagine that! Before its bankruptcy in 1996, it was manufacturing the prop-driven Fokker 50 and the jet-powered Fokker 70. And the mother of them all, the largest aircraft manufactured by them, the OG Uncle Fokker. Meet the Fokker 100. I could do these inner windows all day long. This beauty greeting us, flying us across to Kalgoorlie is November Hotel Juliet. A Fokker 100 with a long history. It first flew in June 1993 with American Airlines before it was taken over by Avianca in 2006. The present owner is Network Aviation Australia, who are operating this sector on behalf of QantasLink. So this aircraft is just shy of her 30th birthday at the time of writing. In my opinion, this is one of the best ways of boarding your flight. Out in the open, listening to the sounds of engine, the whiff of A1, and the wind in my hair. Well, on my head. Let me know in the comments if this is your favourite as well. A very warm welcome awaited us at the door, and I was soon stepping on board this time machine. I was this close to squealing like an excited schoolgirl watching Harry Styles at his concert. For an aircraft that is almost three decades old, I was quite taken aback at how spotless the interior was. Every piece of fitting looked and felt spanking new. And the aisle, it felt unusually wide. This was a very good first impression. The Fokker 100 has a capacity for 100 passengers, hence the 100 designation. It has a unique configuration of 2x3 in an all-economy layout. When I sat down, the leg room was really quite shockingly huge. My god! Is this premium economy? I can cross my legs with ease with room to spare. A tray table folds out which can be moved back and forth. Inside the seat pocket, you'd find the safety card, and voila, the in-flight magazine is back. In case I get sick from all my excitement, there is also an air sick bag. A button is located on the armrest and this reclines the seat back. I gotta say, the recline is very generous. In the 90s, when CDs were all the rage, the overhead console looked like this. Air nozzles to cool myself with, and the reading lamp which is a pale sickly yellow. LEDs weren't invented yet in 1993 I suppose. Finally, I specifically chose to sit in row 19 because of this view. Let's just say my heart was beating so fast and I was grinning from ear to ear like a creep.
I wish I could sit there and listen to that engine spool up all day long. But we've got places to go and things to do. So we thundered down runway 21 and got airborne into the beautiful evening skies over Perth. Our flight path would see us making several left turns over suburbia before settling in the general direction of Kalgoorlie. Clocking a total distance of 540 kilometers and a flight time of 1 hour 5 minutes. On this very short flight to Kalgoorlie, only a snack is served. As this flight was only half full, it was a very easy shift for the hosties so they had time to come around to offer us seconds and thirds. We also had access to a full range of drinks on offer. As this is a Friday evening, I suspect most passengers on board were Kalgoorlie residents returning home, and most of them were either asleep or did not take up the offer of a snack and drink. As with all good things, it has to come to an end somehow. So it's time for me to summarize today's journey on QF1610, this truly enjoyable flight in a Fokker 100 from Perth to Kalgoorlie. I have to compliment the staff on how friendly everyone was. From the extremely cheerful welcome I got at the lounge, to this batch of crew on this flight. They are true representation of what customer service is, and they made sure we were all catered for in flight. They were constantly asking if they could get me anything else even after I declined. One of them even saw me filming, and when I explained why I was on this flight, she shared her enthusiasm about working on the Fokker 100. It is such a unique aircraft, and there's not a lot of them left in the world. Thankfully, majority of the Fokker 100 still flying these days are found in Australia, being operated by no less than three airlines. So would you like to get on board one of these rare beauties? I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments. For now, Let's enjoy this approach into Kalgoorlie.
Well, guys, welcome to Kalgoorlie. And that was my flight with Qantas Link on the Fokker F100. What an unforgettable experience that was because the sound of the engine, it's, it's so unique. I mean, it's, it's, it is so unforgettable for me because I've never heard such an engine before. Yeah, so that was a great experience. And um, I mean, if I could extend the flight a little bit longer, I would do so in a heartbeat because that was just incredible, that experience. Well, anyway, I will chuck uh, details of my Instagram on your screen right now. So uh, chuck me a follow there. And um, yeah, so you know uh, what sort of traveling I'll be doing uh, in real time. And it also gives you an idea of the kind of videos that will be coming up on my YouTube channel. Uh, of course, um, let me know in the comment section what did you think of that flight. I mean, have you done the Fokker 100 before here in Australia? Or if you're thinking about doing one, um, yeah, this is the best uh, place to do it because uh, they're still around here in Australia. So uh, still pretty active with Qantas Link. So they are a pretty good option if you want to set foot on the Fokker 100. Well, anyway, um, I'm going to bid you farewell now. So don't forget to tap that uh, subscribe button and also the bell notification icon so you know the next time when another one of my videos come up, okay? So until the next time, stay safe and I'll see you for my next video. Bye! <sighs> anyway, here's a little bonus video for you. Um, this is the problem with small town airports. They don't have Uber, so you are pretty much reliant on taxi companies. And I've been waiting for my taxi. Everyone's gone now. I'm the only one left. And um, because everyone who arrived had someone to pick them up, and I'm still waiting for my taxi. And they're taking such a long time to come. Oh, speaking of which, here's the taxi. And I'll, I'll talk to you in a bit. I'll talk to you when I get to the hotel, okay? Bye. Yeah, so I finally made it to the hotel. What time is it now? Um, it is 7.35. So we landed at 6.40. So everyone from the aircraft um, apparently is from here, right? So everyone had someone picking them up at the airport. So it looks like I was the only one who needed a taxi. So I called, the two, there are only two taxi companies. So I called and I called one. One of them didn't pick up the phone. It rang and rang and rang. We're busy, we're busy, we're busy. Please hold the line. And then it just cut off after 20 minutes. So I called the hotel for help. I said, look, I'm the only one left at the airport, right? And I need, uh, I need, a, I need transport to come to the hotel. So they called a cab company for me and they took their time to come. So eventually they turned up and yeah, I'm at the hotel now. So yeah, this is the challenge. It's the same. This was the same issue I had when I went to Mount Isa. Um, yeah, but anyway, uh, it's been a long day of travel. I'm gonna settle down in the hotel room. Um, just leave my stuff here and then go for dinner. There's nothing around here except the, the restaurant at the hotel. Thank God it's still open. So I'm gonna go there for dinner now because I am so bloody hungry. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you for my next video. Bye.